the bottom of the fourth, the Catoctin Cougars are getting it done. In fact, they have come in to score two runs, and so they lead the contest two to nothing. The Pioneers open up their 2006 football season right here at home. We're at the 46th annual tournament here in Bobcat Arena on the campus of Frostburg State University. We'll have more on the ACIT tonight at 11. Organizers say 59 golfers are registered to compete. The winners of the senior team will receive this beautiful cup. Golfers say they can't wait to tee off here in Greenville. Despite losing to the number two team in America, Duke, Maryland Terrapin players say they believe this team will continue to get better and ultimately reach their goal of making it to postseason play. In his third season, conversations about LeBron James by many basketball experts list him as the possible MVP. James is leading the Cavs to the NBA playoffs for the first time since 1988. The two-time All-Star is averaging almost a triple-double. Folks, 31.7 rebounds and six assists per contest. I interviewed LeBron after the Wizards game about being one of the greatest players in the history of professional basketball and the possibility of being voted MVP. Here's what LeBron had to say. That's exactly what I do. You know, I just go out and play my game and try to help my team win. Uh, I don't force no action. I just go out there and just, and, you know, was there, I, I take it, you know, and uh, my teammates does a great job of giving me uh, the ball in positions to score. Or I get myself in a position to score and make big plays for our team. The Hagerstown Suns are playing quality baseball. They got it done again last night. Let me show you the highlights. There he is, the skipper, Frank Cacciatore. Bottom of the six, Suns lead 5-1. to one. Jesus Gamero pops it up there on the sack fly, and the ball is caught by Brandon Johnson, but Levy Ventura hustles in to score 6-1. to one. Hagerstown still bottom of the sixth. Will Vogel takes the offering to center. It falls in shallow there. Drew Butera scores and Armand Garland both plate runs there as the Suns go on and win it by a final score of 13 to 1. Reed Crosser is in his first year as the new head coach of the Millbrook High School Pioneers football team. He says his passion and experience is his motivation to turn around a team which finished just 3 and 7 last season. Yeah, we're certainly excited about the chance to, to have our first winning season in the history of the school. I mean, we've talked about to the kids the opportunity for their class and their their team to be remembered, you know, years from now. Um, so, you know, they have an opportunity to truly be a pioneer at this school, and, and that's what uh, we've impressed upon them. The Pioneers have 55 players in camp. Millbrook's first football senior class is showing a commitment to their new coach. Many players maintain the camp is challenging, but they are determined to translate hard work into W's on Friday nights. The workout's crucial because of the sun. It's hot out here. But we're all getting together, pouring long hard as a team, trying to make our season be a success. Having a new coach is a great experience. It's uh, it's introduced us to do different styles of uh, playing the game. Um, he's done a great job so far. We all really like him. We're all really gathering around him and buying into what he's saying. And uh, I think we're going to have a great season this year. It's hard work, discipline, work ethic, things like that. And we feel if we're able to do those, those will translate into wins, and the wins will kind of take care of themselves. So right now we're just taking baby steps towards that process. The Pioneers open up their 2006 football season right here at home as Millbrook plays host to Heritage. That game will be played on September 1st at 7 p.m. On the countdown to kickoff in Winchester, Virginia, I'm James Hill with NBC 25 Sports. Ashley Meadow and the Catoctin Lady Cougars finished the 2006 softball season as Maryland 1A state champions. Catoctin's record, 20 and 3. I'm so excited. Oh, this is the year. I just everything fell together for basketball and softball. We were a complete team. We didn't rely on just one player. Everybody pitched in. It was just amazing. Catoctin defeated Colonel Richardson for nothing. Senior ace Alicia Brandenburg was in the zone. She only allowed three hits in her championship shutout. It's all or nothing. You don't want to go home with second place. That just doesn't mean anything to you when you've come this far. I've never had this feeling before, so it's hard to explain. I'll probably be able to look back and tell you what it feels like, but it's just bliss. That's what I was telling my assistant coach. It's just, I don't, it's just bliss. Catoctin Junior Ashley Meadow is all smiles because she's been able to do something very unique. She helped the girls basketball team win a state title back in March and now she's able to help the softball team win another state title and folks that's two state championships in two months. 
this is a year. I mean, uh, two championships in one year. I don't know how you explain that to people that we went without winning anything for 20 years and then you get two in one year? That's just amazing. Ashley Meadow and 11 of her teammates are returning next season. Their goal is to repeat as state softball champions. In College Park, James Hill, NBC 25 Sports. DJ Strawberry and the Maryland Terrapins showed flashes of excellence versus Duke. The Maryland's bench outscored the Blue Devils 21 to two, but they still lost the game 96 to 88. I thought that we could have won this game if we, if we would have uh, just uh, limited some mental mistakes in, in early in the second half. And, you know, if we would have did that, we, we probably would have won the game. You know, we would have we been right there. Maryland's head coach Gary Williams says intensity, poise, and using a sense of urgency down the stretch can help his team win games versus quality opponents. You know, we played ourselves back into really good shape down four at halftime. Uh, and we came out the second half and just weren't ready to work as hard as necessary to match up, you know, out of transition, things like that uh, against Duke. And, That'll enable them to get that jump there to start the second half. Despite losing to the number two team in America, Duke, Maryland Terrapin players say they believe this team will continue to get better and ultimately reach their goal of making it to postseason play. I definitely think that we are moving forward, you know. We need to get these, these last games left, you know, so we can make the tournament, you know. That's the ultimate goal, you know. We're trying to do it for the seniors, Nick, Sterling, and, and uh, Travis. Just playing at home, it, it hurts. I mean, because you want, you want to beat Duke. Everybody wants to beat Duke. But, you know, we have to move on, and we have, to, we have another game on Tuesday, and we have to come in ready to practice tomorrow. DJ Strawberry and the Terps will look to use lessons learned from their Duke setback. Maryland returns to action on the road February 14th, 8 p.m. at Clemson. In College Park, James Hill, NBC 25 Sports. It wasn't pretty, but it is a Washington Redskins victory over the Chicago Bears 9-7. You know, the Redskins' backfield combined for 164 yards, but they didn't score a touchdown. Clinton Portis says he's the team leader, and he wants to do whatever it takes to help Washington win football games. To take on that role, you got to go out and you got to play. You got to let your, your plan do the talking for you. But to be vocal off the field, you know, to get the guys into the game. When you've got a good defense like we do, you know, you, you don't have to be flashy. You don't always have to score touchdowns in the, in, the, in the red zone. You would like to. You just have to play smart. You have to be smart with the football. Don't turn it over. And if you do that, you've got a great advantage. And, and uh, if you're smart with the ball on this team, we're going to win football games. I had a real reservation with Chanel. He, he hurt his neck. Actually, on that play, unless I missed something, okay, that, was, that should have been, from where I was, that was 15 yards if I've ever seen it. We're supposed to be watching the quarterbacks, and uh, best as I could tell, I don't know, y'all maybe had better view than I did, but that's what we're supposed to do is protect the quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, he had a strain in his neck, and for me, you know, uh, personally, uh, I just kind of felt like Mark got in there, looked pretty smooth, looked good. And I uh, was handling things pretty good, and I just felt like I was going to stay with, uh, stay with Mark. The Washington Redskins return to action for Monday night football on the road at Big D. You know, that game will be played on September 19th, and whenever the Redskins and the Dallas Cowboys get together, it's always a fan's treat. Reporting from FedEx Field, James Hill, NBC 25 Sports. Quarterback Steve Air McNair and the Baltimore Ravens spent day two of their three-day voluntary mini camp getting more familiar. Whiteout DeVard Darling says he's getting more comfortable with McNair on every snap and pass. Uh, everything is good, man. We're just out here trying to get used to uh, the old Steve McNair's cadence and his, his whole just his whole aura of being in the offense. So we out here just trying to work hard, man. Just doing it, get, uh, getting better every day. I mean, as an offense as a whole, we want to just take on the role that our defense don't have to depend on us. You know, they can, they gonna do what they do. You know, get the ball back, or whatever. But if we have to go on a 90-yard drive, then we're capable of doing that. If you know, we have to milk the clock, that we're capable of doing that. Last season, Baltimore finished with a record of six and ten in the strong AFC North division. This offseason, the Ravens are determined to enhance their offense. With the re-signing of running back Jamal Lewis, wide out Mark Clayton improving, and Air McNair in the pocket, the Ravens could score a lot of points this fall. Cadence. Every, every quarterback has their own way of going about it. The cadence and the only way how they 
they stress out certain words and some words they don't. I mean, you got to get used to that. You, you probably see in the near future a lot of guys uh, jumping on sides, you know, just with the different quarterbacks and the rhythm. You know? He just finds a way to win, and, and um, he's been to the Super Bowl. He's, he's uh, obviously had all it is a great resume, but that kind of uh, experience, you know, just can't help but respect it. And then when you will see it on the field this year, I, I guarantee that. Steve McNair and the new look Ravens have a lot of plays to learn this offseason. Baltimore opens up their preseason hosting the New York Giants on Friday, August 11th. In Owings Mills, James Hill, NBC 25 Sports. Hagerstown Suns head groundskeeper Mike Chow is passionate about his high maintenance task. His ongoing challenge is keeping the baseball diamond ready to play ball. The mound is the most important part of the game. Um, we can't have any of our pitchers getting injured, so we can't have any kind of holes out here at all. We want this to be as hard as it can be, uh, so they're on stable footing at all times. The Suns grounds crew spends countless hours grooming the field all year long. Suns management says preparing for opening day can present many operational challenges. Including you know, finishing up, putting up any billboards, uh, some signage around the ballpark, uh, menu boards, just for some directional signs, it's real helpful around the ballpark. We do a final check of all the seats, the cup holders. Um, there's a few spots even where we're making sure the paint's <laughs> still drying. Uh, and mostly it's just operational at this point. While Suns general manager Kurt Landis works extremely hard on putting the final touches together for opening day, the Suns ground crew is also working their best. Mike Shaw says a typical set of three bases like these will cost about $200 and it can be very costly to continue to maintain a field all season long. When you first walk in, we want you to look out at our grass and go, man, how did they do that? How is their grass so green and mine at my house isn't that green? That's our main goal. If that happens, we've done our job. A job Mike Shaw and his grounds crew look forward to continuing for another Suns baseball season. At Municipal Stadium on opening day, James Hill, NBC 25 Sports. We'll have more for you, as always, right here at 6 o'clock and 11. Have a great day and continue to watch NBC 25 Sports.